okay hey guys uh, this video I'm going to be talking about the Dijkstra's algorithm and uh, how it will be useful for link state routing so basically the Dijkstra's algorithm is going to be used to calculate the shortest path between any two nodes so uh, in this uh, it can be used to calculate the shortest path between A and F, A and G and so on normally it will be asked in exams for calculating the uh, shortest distance and shortest path between the nodes which are most spread, spread apart like A and G in this example so uh, let's just get started with the algorithm and how we can use uh, the algorithm to find out the shortest path between any two given nodes so uh, the way we're going to use uh, Dijkstra's algorithm to calculate the shortest path is first we can use uh, uh, a link state uh, database between all the nodes to calculate uh, the shortest path and for the link state database what we'll be basically doing is we'll be writing the table of all the nodes a b c d e f g so we'll be writing here it will be a 7 by 7 table e f g and based on the distance from one node to the other we'll be drawing a link state database so here uh, the distance between a and b is 4 so we're going to we're going to be writing 4 in the place where there's uh, a and b so here there's a and b so we're going to be writing 4 here and similarly over here there's a and b uh, wherever uh, you see uh, two a's you're going to be filling it or, or two b's or two of the same node you're going to be filling it with zero so i'm going to be filling the whole diagonal matrix with uh, zero and uh, likewise uh, when you don't see any link between two points in this case there's no link between a and e and a and f so you're going to be filling those places with infinity so a and e a and f a and g here a is linked with a b c and d so 5 and 3 over here so 5 and 3 over here and likewise I think you should be able to fill this whole table to get the link state database so this link state database will be helpful for you in calculating the shortest path so uh, I'm going to be skipping that part I'm going to be focusing on Dijkstra's algorithm and Dijkstra's algorithm we can start off uh, we have to start off with the first node in this case we're going to be taking A as the starting node okay and from a we're going to be calculating the shortest distance to all the concurrent nodes all the nodes from a we're going to be calculating shortest distance mainly uh, we're going to be considering g as the end node so let's see how to do this so first off we start with a uh, we can use the link state database to calculate to see the distance between a and the other uh, neighboring nodes so the distance between a and a is zero okay that's obvious because you don't need to travel any distance to go to the same node okay it's the same uh, this is between a and b is 4 this is between a and c is 5 as you can see from the graph a and d is 3 and there's no other neighboring nodes to a so all the remaining nodes you can fill it with infinity right so uh, one thing which I do uh, to, just to remember how we came to the node B, C or D over here is to write a subscript of the node which is previous to it so I write A as a subscript to this okay so by writing the path over here we can finally find out how we uh, finally got to the end node okay you'll understand this as we go on so what is the shortest distance uh, shortest node meaning which node is the closest to A so we can find out that D is the process to A. So we're going to be writing D over here. Okay. Uh, as we've already traveled to A uh, and we're right now in D, we can uh, ignore D and A. Right now we can write, uh, put a box on A just to remember that we've traveled to A. Okay. Uh, and also for D because we've traveled to D also. Okay. So we have B, C, E, F, G remaining. So what's the distance between d and e so distance between d and e is 3 but we need to write down over here the total distance which is 3 plus 3 so we need to write down 6 however we can't oh yeah so we can we, we can write down 6 over here and we write 6 ae 
yeah okay so uh what's the distance between d and c this is what i want to come to what's the distance between d and c d and c is six uh and the total distance is nine so we're supposed to write down nine over here but the problem right now is there's already a shorter path between for reaching c which is through a directly so we don't need to write down adc we can just write down ac's distance which is five so whenever we uh, there's a smaller distance above in a previous row, we just write that distance instead of writing the new distance. So we have already calculated for C E. What what else node is neighboring D? This A which we have already traveled. This C and D. There's nothing else. So we uh, write infinity for the nodes uh, which we haven't uh, re uh, reached yet, and we just carry forward B's value which is four. Okay, so that's up with D. So what is the shortest uh, node over here? Shortest from all the values of this is B. So what we need to do right now is we have right now traveled to D. But we have noticed that the uh, nodes from D is taking a longer path than AB. So now we're going to go to B from A to B. Okay, so we've already visited A, we've visited B, we've visited D. We have these four nodes remaining. So let's see what node we can travel from now. B to C is 2. But the total distance is 4 plus 2. 4 plus 2 is 6. But already there's 5 over here. So we're going to carry forward 5. What else do we have? We have E. But we can't travel to E. So we carry forward from the previous 6AE. Uh, then we can travel to F and G. So what's the distance to F? The distance to F is 3. So 4 plus 3 is 7. We're going to write A, B over here. Distance to G is 4. So, uh, total is 8. We're going to write A, B over here. Right? So what is the shortest distance among all these? Shortest distance is C's. So put a box over here. And we write for C. So we have traveled these four. Now from C we can travel to E and F. So the distance to E is 5 plus 4, but we're going to be writing only 6 because 6 is the lower distance. Uh, 5 plus 4 is 9, 6 is lesser than 9. So we'll be writing 6. Similarly, we'll be carry, forward, carry forwarding for F also. 5 plus 4 is 9. We already have 7 over here. And G, we can't reach G from C. So we'll just write G's value as 8. So smallest from here is 6. Similarly, we can just keep carry for doing the same procedure for all the nodes. Let's, let me just finish this. So from E, we can uh, visit F, D and C. We've already visited D and C. We have to visit F. So what is the value from E? 6 plus 2. It's 8 for F. I'm sorry for F. But it's already 7. So we're going to be writing 7 over here. And I'm guessing this also will be the smallest. Yeah. And lastly, from F. What is the distance to G? Distance to G from F is 7 plus 2. 7 plus 5, which is 12. But we already have 8, so 8 is the smallest distance. So, we have found out that 8 is the smallest distance to reach A from, from to reach G from A. Okay, so A to G is 8. But how are we going to write the map of shortest distance for all the nodes? See, that's why I wrote the prefix over here. So using the prefix, we can write the map for all the nodes, not just G, we can write for A, B, C, D, everything. So how we do this is just by starting off with the first node. Okay. So uh, just see where the boxes are. Okay. So the box to B is four. Okay. And it's from A. The box to C is 5. It's from A. The box to D is 3 from A. And similarly, E, F, G, they have uh, gone through a second node. So E has gone through. Uh, I think I've written it wrongly. E has gone through D, A, D. So which is 3 plus 3 is 6. 
uh, and then f has gone through b so which is 4 plus 3 is 7 uh, and then g has gone also through b which is again 4 plus 4 8 so this is the final graph you get you can use this to calculate the shortest distance from a to every single place so that's how we calculate that's how we use the Eistrach algorithm to calculate the shortest path this will be very useful for link state routing and it will probably be coming for your final examinations too thank you